invited lecture by Nemanja Milosevic on open source software for computer science education. Just, just one second, please. Okay. Dr. Milosevic, the floor is yours. Okay, so please let me know if you can see the, the, the slides. Yes, we can, and we hear you well. To continue. Okay, great, thank you, thank you. So hello everyone, uh, thank you for the introduction. I will try to keep this talk short as we are a little bit late. Uh, my name is Nemanja Milosevic. Uh, I'm a recent uh, PhD computer scientist, uh, only last week, so uh, very recent. Uh, I'm, I work as a teaching assistant at the uh, University of Novi Sad at the Faculty of Sciences at the Department of Mathematics and Informatics. And today I wanted to uh, talk about our uh, basically our success story uh, in some way how we are using uh, uh, free software in uh, computer science education at, at our department. Uh, so, the presentation is uh, separated into three parts. Uh, I first want to just briefly go over what are some of the benefits both for the students and for the teaching staff and the management staff when using free open source software in education. Uh, secondly, just briefly, I want to talk about how classroom management uh, is easy if you are using uh, if you are using the uh, the correct tools and the Linux operating system. And uh, lastly, but uh, perhaps more uh, most important, I want to talk about the community we have built uh, that is around uh, free open source software and uh, some friendships that we have uh, made because of because of the way that we are uh, doing things. So. To start with uh, some reasons or some benefits uh, about why would you uh, use free open source software in education in general and especially for uh, software development education or computer science education. Uh, I think the main uh, benefit for the, for the students is uh, the ability to learn from uh, open source projects. So we have anonymous uh, comments on all of our courses and students often say that they would like to have more practical experience and this is one of the ways uh, uh, which is uh, great to for them to uh, to get this experience by working on uh, on open source project and learning how to contribute to these open source projects uh, in teaching we don't have to neither us nor the students have to worry about licensing uh, for the tools that we are using uh, one added benefit of that is that the students uh, learn some tools uh, which are open and they can continue using them after they uh, graduate and when they start working uh, in uh, software development companies or wherever they are uh, working. Uh, one more benefit is that the so uh, open source software is generally more adjustable. Uh, it's much easier to modify uh, the, the uh, some software to comply uh, with the way that you want to teach uh, if, the, if the software you are using is, of course, open and uh, modifiable. Uh, some more reasons, some more benefits uh, for students. I think it's very important to get involved with uh, the open source community, to learn about uh, code sharing, to learn about uh, the open development process, which is uh, often used in, in development of open source software. Uh, again, uh, it's very uh, valuable experience that students can gain through open source contributions. Even putting uh, putting up some uh, uh, small project code on GitHub can lead to some uh, uh, to, to some uh, different uh, experiences with other developers or uh, important questions or uh, contributions from others and things like that. Uh, and uh, in this way, our students can learn from, from experienced developers. They can contribute to very large projects, even though these contributions don't have to be something uh, large or complicated. Uh, they, can, uh, they can learn from uh, experienced developers who work at really large software companies. And uh, this would, of course, help them later in their career. Uh, so. To, in short, uh, students gain insight into large-scale software development, modern uh, way of developing software, in other words, but in the comfort of their home, so they can uh, dedicate uh, their time uh, as much as they want to this 
uh, it's not the same as, for example, students taking internships or often sadly unpaid internships in uh, some companies where uh, they can learn about this. They can also learn it from uh, free and open source software. So free software leads to free experience uh, and of course experience leads to uh, better software engineers uh, when they start working. Uh, so in teaching at, uh, at University of Novi Sad, uh, we uh, are using a lot of open source tools and we're very proud of that, uh, that uh, uh, fact. Uh, so almost everything that we are uh, using and that we used before uh, is uh, free software. There are some sad exceptions uh, where there are no suitable uh, alternatives. But uh, this wasn't always like this. So even like five or 10 years ago, we still used a lot of commercial software, which often companies give to, to faculties or other educational institutions uh, in hope that the students, when they're finished uh, their, uh, uh, when they graduate, they uh, would uh, purchase this software because they are familiar with it. At, at least that's one of the reasons. So we tried uh, to, uh, to find some open source alternatives and we tried to uh, modify our uh, way of teaching so that we can use these open tools. Uh, we don't use any uh, virtual machines uh, with uh, Microsoft Windows or uh, anything else. I mentioned this because uh, when talking to colleagues from other institutions and even our colleagues from our university, this is often the solution. So you don't want your uh, uh, computers in your computer sensors to uh, computer centers to be bloated or installed with many different uh, types of software so you use often use virtual machines to sort of separate uh, what uh, who is doing what with with these with these computers in computer centers uh, so we are completely avoiding this and we also keep just uh, as a, as a, uh, I think a, a good practice, we keep separate user profiles and configurations per course or per class, so that files from different courses don't don't mix. Uh, this is a short list of some of the uh, uh, software that we are using. Of course, the list is uh, much longer, uh, but you know already uh, that uh, there is a lot. There are a lot of uh, great development tools which are free and open source so this is just some some of them that we are using and i think uh, it's important to mention this uh, of course there are many more tools and uh, and the de development tools and other tools that we are using in teaching for example we are, we are using jitsi for uh, teleconferencing we are using uh, uh, I can't remember anything else right now, but uh, uh, we are using a lot of a lot of uh, open source software. Uh, and in general, when we need some new software, we are first looking at the uh, free uh, open source uh, versions, or if the, if there are any. And then, if there are not, then we are uh, then we are looking into how if, if and if we can get some uh, proprietary software uh, for educational use. Uh, so, the second part of our, let's say, success story is the ease of management. So, uh, Linux in general is very easy to, to maintain. So, if you're using Linux in your computer centers, uh, it's uh, much less work for the management or for the teachers. So, uh, I just want to share how we are doing things at our, at our department. We are using Fedora Linux. Distribution. I'm very involved with uh, with Fedora Linux. I'm part of their ambassador program, and I'm I've been using it for a very long time. And contribute also to, in code and packaging and things like that. So why we chose Fedora is because uh, it has latest development software. So we don't have to go elsewhere to look for development tools. Uh, in official Fedora repositories, we have. Uh, uh, usually the latest stable versions of uh, all the software that we need. Uh, it has very good documentation, it has good support, uh, it's easy to maintain, uh, and overall we are very, very happy. We can recommend it uh, to, other, to other educational institutions. Uh, to manage uh, our, our classroom, uh, which is called RC3, we are using a 
a very simple solution. We decided to open source it so other, others can also use it. Uh, it's basically a collection of Python scripts, uh, which use under the hood, they, it, it, uh, they use SSH to uh, basically do a lot of things uh, in the classroom. So uh, they can execute custom commands. We can monitor students during tests. Uh, we can do automatic updates. Uh, we can do automatic uh, turning off uh, of all the all the computers in the in the classroom, which is very useful at the uh, end of a long day when you uh, need to go home. You can just you don't have to check if all the computers are uh, turned off. You can just do it automatically and so on. So. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the code is open source. Uh, if you find something that you think you can contribute or if you have some issues uh, using the code, please contact me. We have been using these uh, scripts for, I think, five or six years now, and we still haven't uh, run into some issues that we cannot, uh, that we cannot solve with, the, with, with them. Of course, there are other uh, more, uh, uh, let's say, popular solutions, for, for example, like Ansible, or even uh, specific uh, uh, classroom management software like Prezi with Z. Uh, but we decided to develop some something uh, which is our own, and we decided to, to share it with everyone else. Uh, and lastly, uh, using free and open source software and Linux uh, has uh, led to building uh, some sort of a community. Uh, among students and uh, teachers and uh, different organizations, for, ex for example, hacker spaces in, in Novi Sad, uh, so that we are all, we, we are all uh, people of similar interests and we uh, use uh, open source software. So this is, I think, uh, one of the best things that, uh, that happened when, uh, when we uh, decided to go for this change, to, to try to use everything that is free software. Uh, we have hosted multiple events, mostly centered about the Fedora Ambassador program that I mentioned. So we hosted release parties at the university where we had uh, technological presentation. We had Linux install days. We actually have one coming next weekend. We organized some very fun uh, free open source quizzes with, uh, with interesting questions about free software for both students and everyone else who was attending and so on. So uh, here is uh, uh, the, our last event. Sadly, because of the, 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 the pandemic, we didn't manage to organize uh, anything in, in recent times. But this was a couple of years ago at uh, one, of the, uh, one of the classrooms at the university where we had a Fedora release party. And I'm happy to report that the Linux install day that we're having next week is organized only partly by me, but it's mostly organized by uh, let's see the next generation or the students who attended uh, our previous our previous events. Okay, so to conclude, uh, main takeaway is that uh, it's very important to teach computer science computer science uh, students about free and open source software, how they can contribute, what the community can do for them, and what they can do uh, for community. Uh, second is, uh, we, we, I always try when, uh, when I'm uh, talking about this to somehow motivate. So if you are in a position when you, uh, if you are teaching somewhere or if you are managing some classroom somewhere and you are not sure if you can manage to, uh, to fully migrate to, to Linux and uh, use more free and open source software, we think it's possible. We are managing to do it. There are challenges, but nothing unsolvable. Uh, so there are some exceptions to the to the rule, but generally we think that uh, for teaching, not uh, the most important thing is not the tools, but actual knowledge that you are giving to the students. And uh, open source tools are more than adequate uh, in order to transfer uh, to transfer this no this knowledge to to computer science students. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Um, now another question, it came for um, Dr. Milosevic uh, from uh, Dr. Pekanovic. So it's three questions and I, I, I'm, I'm going to read them all to you because I think they're really short. Are GT and other services locally hosted? 
If yes, how much effort time does it recover, uh, require to support them? And do you have to do it yourself or you have some actual support? If not, uh, all, all and also how do you finance everything? Uh, thank you for the questions. So uh, we are using several teleconferencing uh, platforms. I mentioned Jitsi because it's free and open. We are self-hosting it. Uh, uh, we have uh, 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 members of our uh, IT, let's say, team who are doing it for us. Uh, we are finding it very easy to use, very easy to manage. Uh, some issues that you can run into with uh, when self-hosting Jitsi is with the recording of, uh, of the sessions. So uh, we are still trying to, trying to solve it. We, we didn't check any... Uh, uh, latest updates, maybe it has been solved uh, upstream, but uh, this is some some issue that uh, I, I I remembered uh, I, re I remember immediately. But other than that, it's working very well. Apart from uh, the uh, Jitsi, we also have licenses for uh, Microsoft Teams, and we also have license for, if I'm not mistaken, Cisco's uh, WebEx uh, Meet uh, platform. So we use it's a those huge collections of platforms. So you use more than one platform. We use more than one. Yes, uh, uh, Jitsi is the only one that we are using, which is free and uh, open source, and that we are self-hosting. Others are normally used through academic licensing. Thank you. 